Question number nine, the Honourable Leanne Dalzell. Mr Speaker, my question is to the Minister for Building and Construction and asks, when was the Ministry of Business, Innovation and Employment first made aware of the September IANS report, which warned the Christchurch City Council that continued accreditation beyond May 2013 will depend on a satisfactory outcome of that assessment, and when was he advised of the content of that report? Mr Speaker. Honourable Dr Nick Smith. Mr Speaker, on behalf of Minister Williamson, the Ministry received the report in mid-October 2012. It was a regular accreditation assessment done biennially on all 69 building consent authorities. Nearly all these uh, reports recommend some corrective actions. A follow-up assessment was done in May this year to check that the corrective actions had been taken. They had not and a final one-month warning was given then. Minister Williamson was advised of this on the 6th of June. Minister Brownlee was advised on the 7th of June, and the matter was raised as an oral item at Cabinet on the 10th of June. Supplementary question? So is the Minister saying that his officials did not provide him with any briefing on a report that contains 17 correction ac action requests and which warned that continued accreditation beyond May 2013 will depend on a satisfactory outcome of the assessment and that the 17 correction, corrective action requests had to be completed by February this year. Honourable Dr Nick Smith. Mr Speaker, I note that the accreditation system that is run by ANZ has been running since 2007. The Christchurch City Council received unsatisfactory reports in its biannual reports for that period. But the point, uh, the, the point I want to make, Annette King, is this. Just listen for a moment. Order. You'll learn something. Is that when those reports are done, that all of the councils, all 69, have had, rec had corrective actions recommended. What the member is suggesting is that every time any corrective action is required, ministers would have to be advised that has never been the practice under the previous government or this. And you've got a Speaker. You've got a Supplementary receive, question, the Honourable Leanne Did he receive reports from MB in relation to the extensive work they were undertaking to assist the Council to meet its requirements to maintain accreditation Order. prior to the 30th of May? And if so, did he pass these on to the Minister in charge of the recovery, or did he not actually read them? Mr. Honourable Dr Nick Smith. Mr Speaker, the Christchurch South City Council Building Consent Department has, I am advised by the Ministry, had difficulties in terms of its accreditation since 2007. The Ministry of Building, Innovation and Employment and its predecessor, DBH, has been meeting weekly with that uh, council for more than a year on these issues. Both Minister Brownlee and Williamson were aware of the support that the Ministry was providing to the City Council as those issues became more acute with the extra workload flowing from the earthquake. So, supplementary question, the Honourable Leon Mr Speaker, has he read the report of um, May and September? Because it's quite clear in both of those reports that, in fact, uh, the Christchurch City Council didn't go through its regular assessment in 2010 because we had a, an earthquake. And in 2011, it was put off for a year because the government passed an order in council uh, to enable the accreditation to stay in place for another year. The first, accredit uh, the first assessment by IANS that they had was September 2012. Has the minister read the report? Mr. Speaker, Honourable Dr. Mr. Mr. Speaker, I am not uh, Mr. Minister Williamson to be able to answer to, to what degree all those reports have been read. But I would note again that of the 30 councils or building consent authorities that are reviewed each year, all of them have reports and all of them have recommended corrective actions. The part I find so ironic about the member is all last year she was criticising the government for dear interfering in the Council and is now on her feet saying that my colleague Mr Brownlee didn't interfere nearly enough. Order. 
Supplementary question, the Honourable Leanne Dalzell. Confirm that the report on the review of the Christchurch City Council building consenting system, uh, which will be released by the Christchurch City Council today, uh, identifies that one of the reasons Crisis Point was reached uh, was information to senior management about the need for correction, corrective actions and or the seriousness of the Christchurch City Council situation was not accurate or was not read or was not, not followed up on. And is that why everything has gone wrong in terms of the relationship between the council and the government? Nobody's reading any of the reports. Right. Yeah. Honourable Dr Nick Smith. Mr Speaker, the Ministry has been working with the Christchurch City Council trying to provide support to improve their building consent system. What they have noted in their reports to ministers is that there has been a lack of buy-in by the leadership within the Christchurch City Council to the sorts of changes that were needed in their building consent system. And that is why the government has been providing support. Again, I find it ironic, and I welcome today the fact that the council has agreed to the appointment of a Crown Manager, although I note members opposite oppose the legislation that would enable the appointment of a Crown Manager. Yeah. Order. Point of order, the Honourable Leanne Dozel. Mr Speaker, I seek leave to, report, to table the report on the review of the Christchurch City Council building consenting system by the Ministry of Business, yeah. Innovation and Employment. Well, if it's the, uh, leave us sought to table that document. Is there any objection? It, it can be tabled. It can be tabled. There was no objection. Question number 10, Jan Logie. Speaker, my question is to the Minister.